I'm not, I'm not full auto, man. It's not full auto. That's not full auto? This is. That's full auto. Damn, bro. Okay. Welcome to Bad Weapon Academy, where we take a look at the worst weapons video games have to offer, and I show you how to best utilize them. In our first episode outside of TF2, we're going to be looking at Doom Eternal's Full Auto Shotgun mod. This mod has had a contentious history. It's been looked down on so much as to essentially be a joke, it's been defended by those who see its strengths, and even recently buffed and given new utility. But overall, it's still perceived as one of the weaker mods in the game. Where does this negative bias come from? Well, that's what Doom Eternal speedrunner Bloodshot9001 and I have teamed up together to find out. Also, just a quick aside, he's going to be the one getting all the footage for this episode because anytime I try to record Doom Eternal, it ends up looking like this. It's so smooth. So, the full auto mod pretty much does what it says on the tin. It changes your shotgun from pump action to full auto upon right clicking to activate the mod. Your rate of fire is increased dramatically, up to about 5 shots a second, meaning you can empty your entire cache of shotgun ammo in just under 5 seconds even when fully upgraded. And that's a part of the problem with the mod. Doom Eternal's limited ammo pool compared to previous games makes simply holding down the fire button a lot less tactically viable, especially for something that can drain your ammo so fast. Other than that, it's largely the same as the base fire of the combat shotgun. It fires 10 pellets, which deal anywhere from 32 to 22 damage depending on your range, and at a certain range, it won't deal damage at all which you can tell when this is happening when you don't have a hit indicator on your HUD. There's also a weird quirk where having the mod activated constricts your FOV slightly. I don't know why it still does that. So, in terms of DPS, or just overall damage, the full auto mod is fairly lacking. Its biggest strengths without its mastery are fairly niche, so let's go over those real quick. Before you get the super shotgun or rocket launcher, it's actually a rather efficient way of dealing with early game arachnotrons. They're not super mobile like Hell Knights who constantly run and charge at you. They're large, easy targets, and they're not so bulky that they can take too many rounds being pumped into them. Before you get burst damage options outside of precision bolts and sticky bombs, it's actually a pretty good way to take them down if you have shotgun ammo to spare, but not chainsaw fuel. However, after this point, pretty much by the time you reach cultist base and get the rocket launcher, its usefulness begins to fall off until you reach the mastery, and this is where most people see the value in this mod. The Salvo Extender Mastery will return shotgun ammo to you. The amount of ammo it returns to you depends on the class of demon you've killed. Fodder class demons will return 3 ammo to you, making them very profitable to kill if you manage to take them out in a single shot as you can do with zombies and imps. And even then, unless your aim and tracking is really bad, you can usually at least go 1 to 1. Heavy class demons will return 7 ammo, which is usually less profitable. Something like an Arachnatron will take 11 shots to kill, so unless you combo it up with your other weapons in order to soften them up, you won't get enough ammo back to make up for it. And even then, the only ammo you are getting back is shotgun ammo, meaning your finisher is all you end up making up for. And with super heavy demons who restore 11 ammo, this is even more extreme and you pretty much have no choice but to combo them if you plan on finishing them off with full auto. Even if you pump your entire cache of shotgun ammo into a Baron, that just brings him to glory kill. So you can't even get your ammo that you just spent back on him. Now, if you work in something like a grenade or a blood punch or both, then this isn't as bad since these don't consume ammo to begin with, and the faltering effect will temporarily stun the targeted demons, making them easier to keep your crosshair on. In fact, using full auto in tandem with grenades and an arbalest is actually a decent way of one-cycling marauders. Not the most efficient way, but still, neat stuff. Ultimately, it's not a terrible finisher. Even in the later games, since you'll be comboing super heavies left and right, and if you happen to get one low enough to a glory kill state or close enough, and you still have some shotgun ammo in the tank, 
Sure, there's not much reason not to finish it off with full auto unless you need health or a blood punch. This has actually helped me out a few times. I'll be low on shotgun ammo, but not completely out of it. And something like a tyrant or baron is just a few shots away from death. So I go for the full auto finish, get my ammo back, and grapple away to something else to get some armor back on top of that. It's somewhat niche, but very satisfying. Here's some simple combos or attacks that can help you get certain enemies into a state that makes full auto a lot more appealing to use with the salvo extender. A single ballista shot will do the trick for both kinds of prowlers and carcasses, especially if you hit the carcass with a ballista headshot to bring it straight to a glory kill state. With 7 shotgun ammo returned for something brought to near death in a single shot, this is very profitable. Blood Punch the Super Shotgun is perfect for Cyber Mancubi, bringing them into a very safe range to full auto. For regular Mancubi, as well as Dread Knights, a single lock-on rocket burst will do the trick without killing them too quickly like it will for Hell Knights and Whiplashes. On the subject of lock-on burst, Ice Bomb to two Blood Punches to break the sled, followed by a lock-on burst, is enough to bring a Doom Hunter straight to glory kill for a nice 11 ammo return. And Pinkies and Spectres are pretty easily dealt with, especially Pinkies if you have some kind of stun like a grenade, ice bomb, remote detonation, or even the meme beam. Ultimately though, outside of this, the full auto mod is outshined by its shotgun contemporaries, the sticky bomb mod, and of course the super shotgun. So you know those 11 shots it took to take down an Arachnatron? You know how many shots a super shotgun will take? Three, two if you're at a close enough range. Even with the salvo extender, that just completely mogs the full auto in terms of ammo conservation and time to kill. And even just flat out brainlessness if all you want to do is hold down the fun button against your enemies and put no other thought into quick switching combos or anything like that. But even if you're not comparing full auto to, let's be real here, one of the coolest fucking weapons in the history of video games made even cooler with the addition of a flaming grappling hook, and instead compare it to its mod counterpart Sticky Bombs, it's still lacking. See, Sticky Bombs lack two things that make full auto less reliable at longer ranges. Bullet spread and damage fall off. A Sticky Bomb deals up to 400 damage to an enemy, 50 on the initial hit, and 350 for the explosion, if you hit them with it directly, compared to the full auto mods 320 at max ramp up if all pellets hit, and its explosive splash damage, which again, has no fall off, will deal that 350 explosion damage to any enemy within the radius. So for groups of enemies, it's clear that sticky bombs are where it's at. And that's not even getting into its other utilities, like getting Kako Demons into a glory kill state with a single bomb, or destroying enemy weak points to make them easier to fight and guarantee a falter. But that's not even the worst part. You see, a sticky bomb has the capacity to deal critical damage, which doubles how much damage you deal to an enemy. This is typically done by either hitting an enemy with a headshot or attacking a weak point. Also sometimes when you shoot it at the ground, but the mechanics for this are kind of confusing. But basically, if your sticky bomb glows bright blue, it's a critical. Three critical headshot stickies are all it takes to get a Hell Knight into glory kill range. That's much easier than landing several point blank directs, and even has an advantage over the super shotgun in that it can be done at long ranges. So basically, if you hit a demon with a critical sticky, it'll deal 800 damage to the demon you hit directly, and 700 damage to anyone else in the radius. When you look at all of that utility and damage stacked up compared to full auto, it really feels like someone at id was playing favorites when it came to designing the mods. Well, at least it's not as bad as 2016 was with the explosive shot and charge burst. Then again, balance really isn't 2016 strike to begin with. So, looking at all that, it's very easy to say that full auto is just outclassed in every department, but there are some situations where it stands out. The most obvious one is the one that was literally designed with this weapon in mind even before the buff, and that's in Tag 2 with the Stone Imps. There's not really much to say here. Stone Imps are designed to be beaten by full auto. They give way more ammo than other fodder class demons to encourage you to go as nuts as possible, spraying away like Arnold Schwarzenegger in an action movie. And they're annoying to fight and kill without it. Hell, they're annoying to fight with it. They are purpose built for full auto, but it's kind of a similar situation to spirits in Tag 1 when no one used the microwave beam until an enemy was invented with the express purpose of getting killed by it. And only then did people start using it for its stunning capabilities. 
which I'll be real, I still find outclassed by grenades or even remote detonation. At least those don't basically halt my movement in a movement shooter. Anyway, telling you to just use the mod on the one enemy that was specifically designed to die against it would be really unsatisfying and leave basically nobody happy. Like, obviously use it against them because there's basically no reason not to, but that's it. There's nothing more to it. Now, where things get interesting is outside of the main game's campaign. Full Auto has its uses in the DLCs and even the master levels, outside of Stone Imps, of course. Because you're going into these completely maxed out, you start off with Salvo Extender. Unlike in the campaign where, unless you save scum in Doom Hunter base, which you can't even do if you're a Chad Big Dick Ultra Nightmare player like me, you'll be waiting until around Arc Complex to finally get it if you're trying for it hard enough. And if not, Taras Nabod when you get your first mastery token. So that's a huge relief right off the bat. You don't have to grind away on pinkies for half the game before this mod starts to become usable again, which I'm sure even people who like the mod get sick of after a while. Now, one of the best times to use full auto is with an onslaught power-up, which I'm still calling quad damage because it sounds cooler. There's a few locations in the campaign that have quad damage power-ups, but only two are available with salvo extender, unless you save scum fighting pinkies, those being the one near the end of Arc Complex, which can be skipped anyway, and the one in Necroval 1, which can be decently useful at least considering you're fighting a tyrant. However, the DLCs and Master Levels are a bit more forgiving. Tag 1 has two quad damage power-ups in UAC Atlantica. The first one can be used during either encounter in this arena, while the second one can make short work of the many heavy and super heavy demons that will spawn in this fight. Punching holes into a Baron or Tyrant with this level of efficiency without needing to do any combos is pretty satisfying, I'll admit. Tag 2 is less generous, giving you one in the World Spear right before you get the hammer. Oh yeah, the fucking hammer! Okay, yeah, no, I take back what I said about the Stone Imps earlier. The hammer trashes them too. And also, it gives you back ammo of all kinds, not just shotgun ammo. And it has a massive area of effect that stuns nearby enemies and deals loads of damage on top of being extremely forgiving in terms of its usage and its recharge. Although, while I'm mentioning the hammer, I should mention that Full Auto synergizes extremely well with it when you use it to stun a Marauder. It's one of the easiest ways to kill a Marauder in the entire game. So easy, in fact, that I'm kind of glad it's only restricted to Tag 2 and Horde mode, otherwise Marauders would be a completely trivial encounter. Anyway, mini rant over. Here it's not as great since we'll be fighting a lot of Cyber Mancubi spaced far apart from each other, so they'll take a lot of hits and try to zone you out, but it's not a terrible option. The overdrive power-up is also worth mentioning since it gives you faster movement speed and infinite ammo. This does make the salvo extender redundant, but it does let you feel like you're using the weapon for its intended purpose, which is to go nuts holding down the fire button and letting out an action movie yell. The devs seem to realize this at the end of Tag 2 and gave you this power-up for the final gimmick arena right before the Dark Lord. As for the Dark Lord himself, Full Auto is actually really good for punishing him after you hit his glowy green eye attack. You know, the only attack of his you can punish because attacking him at any other time heals him. God, I hate this boss. Since you're meant to hit him with the hammer to stun him, you get plenty of shotgun ammo back, which just lets you pump shots into him for longer. And while I'm on the subject of bosses, it's not terrible to use against the con maker, especially since the maker drones flying around give you plenty of opportunities to refill your entire pool of ammo even if you unload all your shots into her. But then again, the con maker is pretty easy, so I'm pretty sure a lot of things would work against her. Then there's the master levels, and of these, the Super Gorness master level easily feels like the best one to use full auto in. For starters, there's the full auto room, where you just kind of hold down the fire button and watch everything die. Would it be more efficient to use sticky bombs here? I mean, maybe, but this is way more satisfying. Then there's the quad damage power-up right before the poisonous tunnel of Double Marauder Anguish. This room is mostly just a stress reliever that pretty much anything will work in, and it's there to remind you that Prowler's existence, they're literally not used anywhere else in the level, so just about anything will work here, but that definitely includes full auto, and it doesn't waste your important shotgun ammo right before the Double Marauder fight since you'll get all of it back anyway, so hey, bonus! The World Spear Master level has this little mini arena with a Marauder and respawning Stone Imp 
which seems pretty much designed for you to use full auto in using the method I talked about earlier with the hammer. You could still fight this normally, but with the stone imps constantly pestering you, it seems like a situation where full auto is specifically intended to make life easier for you. And the arc complex master level is so dead easy that I'm pretty sure you can solo it with just full auto, which is certainly one way to keep it interesting. And the big thing I've been saving for last, the mode where full auto really gets a chance to shine, Horde Mode. Horde Mode almost feels like it was designed with the newly buffed full auto in mind. During the first stage, it's your best sustained fire damage option. And the fact that it only returns shotgun ammo isn't a bad thing at all since it's the only weapon you have, and it lets you conserve chainsaw ammo which you can use to kill heavy demons during the final round of the stage as quickly as possible, along with your point bonus and quad damage. And since you get quad damage so often, assuming you're killing the bounty demons, this means full auto is always useful as a sort of old reliable fallback tool that's perfect for tearing through groups of enemies or focusing down a single target, and this can easily last for the power-up's entire duration with how much ammo you're getting back. And the randomized weapon drop system means that if you end up getting something like the plasma rifle first, it's a stronger sustained fire option during those point bonus rampages. And even if you get the super shotgun first, the salvo extender is still a very useful attribute since it allows you to conserve chainsaw ammo, and you're not neglecting the ammo pools of your other weapons since you don't have any other weapons. Its usefulness in the bonus blitz stages is pretty dependent on which enemies you're facing, and what other weapons you have at the time. If you have something low on ammo like the rocket launcher, or something weaker like the plasma rifle during the cybermancubus blitz round, then full auto might be your best bet to get as high of a score as possible, especially since running out of ammo can be a concern in those stages. And that about wraps things up! Full auto really is a mixed bag, but it's a mixed bag that can be pretty fun and satisfying to use in the right situations. And when you don't pathetically run out of ammo in the middle of your attack, hoping the demon you're fighting dies out of sheer pity, it can be decently fun to use. If I had to suggest some kind of change, one I've heard tossed around a few times is for the damage to scale up with subsequent shots. So the longer you hold down the fire button, the more damage you'll do. Obviously this would scale up to a certain point, and I don't think it should match or surpass the super shotgun, but if it were to get a buff like that, I don't think it would feel nearly as outclassed. I'd also get rid of that little zoom that happens when you activate it. Like, I get it for sticky bombs since they're longer range, but it's not like turning my FOV from 100 to 95 helps with my aiming, especially when this isn't even a long range weapon. Overall, I think full auto is a good weapon to start off branching off into other games with. It's underwhelming, outclassed, not all that great, but it has its uses and ultimately, I find it pretty fun to use. I don't bust it out all the time, but when I do, it's usually because it's a situation I know I'll have fun with it in, and getting to know those situations to maximize the fun you'll have with the weapon is where the learning curve really is. So for now, go out there and full auto the demons in the building, and tell them fish sent you.